You know, I find it difficult to feel sorry for those who know what's coming, yet they don't change their behavior. Take, for instance, our children. When we say, Jeremiah, Judah, Anna, we need you to pick up your toys. We need you to clean up your room. If you don't do that, then you're going to have to stand in a corner. Or if you don't do that, you're going to be grounded. Or you're not going to be able to watch YouTube. Or if you don't do that, you're not going to that party you want to go to. Well, when they don't do it and we follow through, they act like they're surprised. What? I don't get to go? I have to stand in the corner? Why? Well, we told you what was going to happen. Hi, I'm Pete, and me and my wife, Shauna, are both ordained ministers of the Church of God. And together, uh, we are Golly Family Discipleship. Uh, we believe the best way to disciple your family is reading and studying the Word of God together and simply discussing it. And today, we're talking about 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. The scripture says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So here, Peter ends his letter by giving what? A warning. He said, look, I know you know this stuff. This stuff I've told you, you've known before. You've been warned of this stuff before. You've been told that this is going to happen by myself and other ministers. But I want you to be on guard. I don't want you to fall away. I don't want you to fall from your salvation. I don't want you to be misled. I don't want you to be tricked. I don't want you to end up thinking you're getting in heaven and on the day of judgment realizing that you're actually going to hell. Right? And he says, no, I don't want that for you. Instead of that, I want you to grow in grace, right? To the mercy of Jesus Christ. The understanding that we can't earn it. Jesus gave it to us. There's nothing we can do to earn it. And it says also in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, I want you to know more about Jesus. I want you. That's why every day, you know, we encourage you to edify yourself for reading the word of God. Get in the word. Learn more about God. He wrote a book about himself. Read it daily. Read it over and over and over and get it in your mind. Get it in your heart. Have it flowing from your lips because that is so important to not being misled, to not being led astray. But you know, I, I, in the opening analogy, I talked about how the kids, when we talk with them and say, hey, look, if you don't do this, you're going to be punished. You have to realize that God has warned us. There's a punishment to come, right? You read Genesis through Revelation, you realize he's a just God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And you read where he says, you know what? Jesus is the only way, right? No man comes to the Father but through the Son. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <coughs> and he's warned us, and he's warned us, and he's warned us. And he said, hey, look, if you don't accept this sacrifice, if you don't accept my son, you're going to have to pay the debt for your own sins. And that means eternal separation from me. So you know what? On the day of judgment, there's going to be a lot of people standing before God, and God's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And they're going to say, what do you mean? What do you mean, worker of iniquity? Scripture even says, they'll say, hey, I cast out demons in your name. I healed the sick in your name. I served other people in your name. And Jesus is going to be like, I don't know you. I do not know you. You never had a personal relationship with me. You played religion, but you did not know me. So as we close Second Peter, examine your heart. Make sure that you're in right standing with God. Make sure that you're walking the path of righteousness. Make sure that Jesus is foremost and up front in your life and you spend time daily with him. Remember, there's four things we believe a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. We want you to seek to encounter God. We want you to exalt God. We want you to edify yourself by reading the word of God and engage this world for Jesus Christ. Just tell them how awesome he is. Until next time, God bless.